Dear Manual Focus, I love you. Thank you. Thank you for the day at the beach when you worked and other methods wouldn't. I'll always love you for that. Trent. Welcome to the Video Center. I'm Trent. In this focusing video, we're going to talk all about one of my favorite focusing techniques. This process of focusing is, I think, one of the more difficult ways to focus a camera, especially when we consider all of the recent improvements in focusing technology, some of which we discussed in one of my last videos. So click here to watch it. Also, please take a second to select the thumbs up icon just below this video. It will help us be more visible on YouTube and help grow the Visual Center. Thank you. So what is this challenging focusing method? As I'm certain you already know from the title of this video, it's manual focus. But why is it so difficult? First off, manual focus can be a lot slower. Again, especially when we compare it to the newest focusing systems on modern cameras. It could take a few back and forth adjustments to land the correct focus when using manual. So be sure to stick around for the end of this video because I'll be sharing some tips that may help us when we're using manual focus. Now second, I find pressing a shutter release button halfway down like this to activate autofocus is much easier, especially when we compare it to having to use another hand to turn the focusing ring like this on our lens. Also, when using manual focus, we could miss focus, especially when using a shallow depth of field. We could go too far or not far enough and our subject will be out of focus and possibly ruining the shot. Now you're probably wondering, why do I like it so much? I shoot both film and digital. I use whatever medium will produce the results I'm looking for. But there are also components of both processes which I really enjoy. I love the immediate results and options and post-production I get from digital photography but I also love the slower, meticulous process and look of film-based photography. This is my 4x5 camera, or my 5x4 camera for my friends back in the UK. This camera takes me five to 10 minutes to set up for a single shot. Now, because of this, I'm a lot more intentional with my photography when I'm using it, and I find that this often leads to better imagery. So, sometimes I like to slow down and be more intentional, even when shooting digitally, and manual focus slows me down. I also feel a much stronger connection to my craft when manually focusing. Now I've been on red carpets and at times had to play the part of a pat photographer. Now this often was my least enjoyable photographic work. Now don't get me wrong, I know some photographers who really enjoy what they do and they do great work on the red carpet. But for me, it wasn't my cup of tea. Now this run and gun type of shooting always felt really disconnected from some of the reasons why I fell in love with photography. I love the feeling of the camera in my hands and the process of capturing images. Manual focus helps me to feel an even stronger connection to this craft. I also think that there's an increased chance that something unexpected might happen since I'm utilizing a manual process and not relying on an exacting digital solution. Now this actually reminds me of a story. I can remember shooting a snowstorm approaching a reservoir up in the mountains where, near where I live. Now my original imagery wasn't working all day, so I made a change. I turned my camera to manual focus and shifted my perspective. The resulting images were much better, and I attribute that to using manual focus and this perspective shift. Now these were just three of the most obvious reasons why I sometimes choose to use manual focus, but sometimes we may need to switch focusing methods out of necessity rather than choice. Often these situations occur simply because our cameras aren't able to obtain the correct focus. These situations often include shooting in low contrast subject matter, shooting crowded images, whether it's people or just a busy scene, shooting in low light or at the night sky, and sometimes when autofocus just won't acquire the correct subject or point within our image. Maybe we're even shooting a macro shot and dealing with a very small depth of field and need more precise control. So how do we select manual focus? Depending on the camera and lens combination we're using, manual focus is often initiated on the side of the lens. Look for a switch like the one you see here. Now some cameras may also have a switch near the lens mount here on the body. 
If your camera has neither of these switches, you may need to initiate manual focus within the menu items on your camera. If you need help finding this option, let me know what camera you have in the comments below. Now look for the letters A slash M and A, AF and MF, or A and M. These stand for manual focus and autofocus. Switch to the A slash M, MF, or M. Now our lens is switched to manual focus. We can now use the focus ring on the outside of our lens to focus our images. Now try holding your camera as you normally would when photographing, and now try to spin the focusing ring. You may find that you need to adjust your grip. Now take a look through the viewfinder and turn the focusing ring to watch the image move in and out of focus. And some cameras may offer a hybrid manual focusing method. You can test this by pressing the shutter release button halfway down after switching it to manual. Does your camera refocus the composition? If yes, then your camera offers this hybrid focusing method. In order to turn off autofocus completely, you'll need to also use the switch on the side of the camera body or within the setting menu. Now here are a few techniques to help us when we're using manual focus. First, one of the best recent innovations in photography is something called focus peaking. This setting on a camera provides a colored overlay on the areas of an image which are in focus, as you see here. We can more easily see what's in focus and what's not. Now the second technique I often use when I'm out shooting at night while looking through an EVF or rear screen with live view activated, press the magnifying button on the rear of the camera. This provides a zoomed in view of our scene or subject. This will help us to more easily see if we're in focus. And after establishing correct focus, we can just zoom back out and take the photo. Next, if we're shooting a moving subject matter, we could utilize a technique called zone focusing. First, we would set up a predefined zone and wait for our subject to move within this zone. This zone could be defined by objects within the frame, perhaps a line in the concrete or tree branches, anything to define the front and the rear limits of our zone. When our subject moves within the zone, we start shooting. Last, we can utilize the depth of field and focus distance scale on our lens. This technique is heavily dependent on the lens we're using. Some lenses, often older lenses, have a scale on the top which details the distance and depth of focus for the current aperture and focus settings, like the scale you see here. We can use this scale to determine if our subject will be in focus. Now I'll be going over these techniques in greater detail in future videos, so be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. So, while manual focus may seem to be a bit of a more challenging method, there are advantages to using it, and a few techniques to aid in its implementation. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching this, my love letter to manual focus. I'll see you next time. Take two. Take two. Take two. Take two.